Here's a problem about uh, using the normal model, uh, and in particular about testing whether a normal model is appropriate. So it's this problem from Bach, Velman, and DeVoe, number 21, uh, from chapter 6. And we're going to do a lot on the calculator, but here's the setup. Uh, we've got individual skiers' times, race times, from the men's Alpine downhill in the Winter Olympics 2002. The units are in seconds. Uh, it was in winter 2002, obviously. Uh, it was in the Salt Lake City region in Utah. It wasn't actually in the city, of course, um, but it, this was probably in Park City or somewhere nearby. Um, and the how is presumably these are official race clock times, and presumably they are to high accuracy. Notice they're to, the, to, to hundreds of a second. They might actually even have them to, to higher accuracy um, in, the, in the, the clock data, but we're only given to two one hundredths of a second, which is fine. Okay. So here's the, here's the setup, and I'll, I'll talk about the specific questions they ask, but here's the general setup. We'd like to analyze this race data and ideally make conclusions, for example, quantitative conclusions with real numbers about proportions of racers with certain ranges of time. So, for example, how likely is it that a racer would get under a certain time or over a certain time or in some range of times? Um, but we're not told whether the data fit a normal model. And uh, so far, that's the only specific model we know at this point in the course. Um, and so we should probably test it. We shouldn't uh, take that on faith. And probably in another video, I'll talk about how the only thing so far I've disliked about this book is that in this chapter, they basically give you the impression that lots and lots of things are normal and that anything that's unimodal and symmetric is basically normal. Just not true. It's a very important um, uh, mistake a lot of people make. But I agree with them in that let's start with a, good mo a pretty good model that does happen a lot of the time. So, and we'll talk in another video about you know, wha what makes things normal and what makes things not normal. So here's the first thing they specifically ask. They uh, have calculated for us that the mean time is 102.71 seconds. And of course, we know how to do that. We could have done that ourselves by just adding them up. Um, and dividing by, there's 53 times, by the way. So I put, I don't know if I put the n equals 53. So let's put n equals 53. Okay. And the standard deviation is uh, 3.01 seconds. And let's put seconds there too. Put it in math mode just for fun. Okay. And again, we could do that by hand, be laborious, or we could do it with one bar stats. Let me actually, let's go ahead and do that. I've sh already put this in. Uh, if you do stat edit, I put this in as L1. Put it, those in on the times there. Um, that was a certain amount of work. This would be a good one to, as they say, to get little T means that you can get the data off the computer. But I wanted to do it on the calculator here. Um, and then if I did, uh, just to check their calculations, I could go to stat calc one bar stats on L1. And indeed, mean is 102.71. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, that's better. And uh, the SX there is 3.01. Okay. So that's how we could have done that by ourselves. And now here's what they ask. Assuming if normal, if it's a normal, normally distributed, the normal model is appropriate, then what percent, or percent, they say percent, I want to say percentage of times will be, for example, less than 99.7 seconds. OK. So that involves, we could do that in a couple of ways. I'll show you just two ways. First of all, we could get the z-scores. OK. So z1 would be, I'm going to take 99.7 minus 102.71. You take, you shift to compare to the, the known mean. And then you scale. You divide by the uh, standard deviation. So you're just expressing it in units of a standard deviation. So we we're going to be we're looking at a time that's less than um, the mean. It's going to be on the left-hand side of this normal distribution, if it is a normal curve. And then we're going to scale it by the standard deviation. And that turns out to be um, I'm, it's amazing it took that long. Oh, hey, one standard deviation. OK, so they're actually choosing this to be particularly nice to us. So we can go ahead and look at it. The question is equivalent to how, what's the probability that the, um, that the time is, or what's the, what proportion of the time? They like, don't like to say probability yet, but it's basically 
what percentage of the times should be less than one standard deviation away. Okay. Now, this is not a range between two. It's not the range between 99.7 and 101 or 102 or something like that. It's just less than. So we want basically the left-hand tail of the histogram that we would get from a normal distribution. So the way to do that, we can go to our calculator and we can look at distribution. Go to normal CDF. That's the area under the curve. That's sort of counting stuff in the, hyp the hypothetical idealized histogram. And I can just go, well, I just want something that um, gets the tail. We're just going to put in a really big negative number. But minus 10 is usually that's for perfectly fine. Because it's very hard to be 10 units away from the standard, the um, 10 standard deviations away from the mean. Let me say that. OK, and then I just put in the minus 1. OK, so about 15, 0.1586, about 16%. OK, so about 16% should, I'm going to put should in quotes, should appear uh, that are less than uh, 99.7 seconds. OK, well, in the actual data set, what have we got? If you look at the data, there are um, just three, 99.13, and 0.41. Okay. The real data is 3 out of 53. And let's evaluate that. It doesn't like to evaluate it numerically unless I tell it to. Okay, so that's about 5.6%. Okay, so that's about 5.6%. Significantly less, about a third of what the normal model is telling us. Okay. So, and that's the, that's the answer to B, by the way. The B asks, let's compare it to the data. Okay, so C asks, why do you think, why don't these percentages agree? And you probably got a hint from how I've been setting this up. Maybe the data is not normal. There's nothing that told us that this data should be normal. Um, so, maybe it's not normal. Maybe this is the only way in which it's not normal? Well, now we really should do some testing. And I'll show you a couple ways to test this. Okay. So we've got the data put in. Oh, and let me, tell, let me show you one more way to do this thing. You don't actually even have to do the z-score by hand. It's great. You need to be able to do z-scores by hand. It's not hard. But let's do that. You can actually put in more parameters in the normal CDF. What we could do is we could go back, do normal CDF, and what I can do is um, the standard, if you don't put in a bunch of parameters in here, the standard is it's going to be the, the standard normal. But you can actually put in the particular normal that you've got with the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, what's the probability that I get between, let's say, 0 seconds and 99.7 seconds? Given that the mean, the third thing you put in is the mean, is 107.2.71, and the standard deviation is the fourth thing, whoops, is 3.01. So it's left-hand endpoint of the interval that you're interested in, right-hand endpoint, mean, standard deviation. And that gives us exactly the same number. So it just gets you out of having to do the z-score by hand, because it, it can adapt to whatever normal CDF you really have. Okay. So let's go ahead and use the calculator a little more. They suggest for part D, create a histogram. And uh, let me do another thing. Let me show you a normal probability plot. They point out oops, stat plot. So I've got this last one here is called the normal uh, probability plot. And as it says in the book, what it does is it looks at this list of data. And let me do zoom 9 so we can show. Oh, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Quit. Zoom. I think I had format there. Okay. So what it does is it plots on the y-axis all the actual data values. And on the x-axis, it's plotting um, how those should show up in a normal distribution. So, for example, the smallest data value out of 53 in a normal distribution should have a certain uh, plot, a certain value, and the middle, the median data value, the 20, what is that, the 26th or 27th data value out of it should have a certain value. The highest data value should have a certain value. If these were on a straight line, they would be conforming to what they should be for a normal um, distribution. The fact that this is not a straight line, that it's clearly curved and has a, definitely some weird behavior, some wiggles, 
is saying that this is not very close to normal. So that's a somewhat sophisticated p way, but a very, but it's kind of a one button press kind of way to figure out that it's just not a normal distribution. Um, but then the, the next thing we should probably do is go ahead and look at the histogram. Okay, so let's go to stat plot again, change it to histogram mode, and let's try zoom nine. Hopefully the calculator, well, that's an okay histogram, but we could probably get away with 53 data, data points. We could probably get away with a few more bins. Right away though, we can see that this doesn't look normal at all. It doesn't look symmetric. Uh, it looks like it has, a, it's skewed with a tail. It looks like it has an outlier. Um, so let's just change the window a tiny bit. Let's say, I'm gonna actually take it down to 90, even though we don't actually have any times there. And I'll take this up to like 120. And then maybe maybe we'll have uh, maybe we'll have ten bins. Let's see how that works. Okay, let's actually let's do a few more bins actually. So in thirty, let's do uh, two point five. There we go. Okay, so it doesn't look normal at all. It's not symmetric. It is unimodal. It's not symmetric. It doesn't have the nice shape a normal distribution would have. And in fact, what we can do is we can compare it. We can use the normal PDF function. They say we're not going to use this, but this is a great place to use it. Let's do normal PDF of x. This is going to give us the hypothetical histogram that the normal would have. And again, I can put in 102.71 and 3.01 and um, graph that. And that's going to give, oh, and here's the other thing. There's one other thing. That will give you the hypothetical histogram if n equals 1. What I have to do is I have to just insert 53 times that. I want it to total up to an area of 53 different, 53 observations. That should work. Okay. So that's what the normal would look like. You can see it's symmetrical, it's beautiful, and it doesn't really look like the histogram at all. And, um, so we're not, I don't know, it's not radically different, but it's different enough so that we really shouldn't be assuming that this is normal, okay? So we can then conclude, so we did this, the calculator. We would probably just want to sketch that histogram we came out of the calculator. I'm not going to try and do that on the computer because that's really hard, okay? And compare. And also we did the normal probability plot and it's not straight. Okay, so let's just summarize that in the tell section. Um, we uh, did two tests to determine if this data seems to be normally distributed. In other words, if the normal model seems to be appropriate. Um, the normal probability plot was not close to a straight line. So that means it's not close to normal. And the histogram was clearly skewed and not symmetric. Uh, and with one outlier, that might not be incredibly important. And with one outlier, um, but it's something to be noted, okay? So using a normal model here is not appropriate. And just one comment about why it might not be appropriate. Um, normal models show up a lot. The, the biggest reason they show up is whenever you have some outcome that's the sum of a bunch of little outcomes. Like if you're taking a test, um, especially in a big multiple choice test, you've got a lot of different problems that you're doing. And if you have a sum of a bunch of outcomes, if those are kind of independent of each other, and that's a, preci a word we'll learn precisely more uh, later, um, then normal does tend to come up a lot. There's a big theorem in that direction. But um, these, it's not clear why that would work here. That the, each of these are just individual racers racing their own style with their own issues. Um, it's not clear if each of these times is sort of the sum of a bunch of little things that the racers do. And so it's not too, too surprising that this ends up not being normal.